zombie pig. The sun was setting behind the great mountains of Arthurton, cradling the town in a warm red embrace. I slept the whole day away? I have to get out of here and make up for lost time. Best in show, horse ballet. First prize, advanced table etiquette? There's one here for best smile, seriously? A heart-shaped mirror for the lady who loves herself. Touching it, I'll burn myself. Hmm, there's something strange about this mirror. This requires further investigation. All the dangly bits are swaying. Strange, it's not windy in here. There's a track in the ceiling panel around the chandelier. It looks like it can move. Seriously, who has windows this big? Below, Lake Nowhere stretched out as far as the eye could see. In the distance, Jenny could just make out the great lighthouse on Skull Island. It's foggy out there tonight. <laughs> I don't remember any of this. I bet that kid's in a lot of trouble. Mom wasn't covered in blood. That's a lie. Pushed from the balcony? That's not what happened. And no mention of electrocution. thought of her poor mother locked away in a jail cell for a crime she didn't commit. Don't worry, Mom. I'll prove you didn't do it as soon as I get out of here. Either this is shoddy reporting or someone is trying to cover up what really happened. My mom's still in jail, so the police must not think this was an accident. And if it wasn't an accident, then... The real killer is still out there! On the other side of the lake, beyond the forgotten forest, sat a more modest house. No fancy windows or crystal chandeliers, just a small wooden frame in need of painting. Home. I've never seen so many clothes. Maybe mine are in here somewhere. Well, my clothes definitely aren't here. It'd be easy to spot amongst all the sequins and ribbons.
nothing happened. I thought I was on to something. This family's disposable income is outrageous. I always knew they were hiding something. I bet there are all kinds of horrific secrets lurking up there. The old attic. Dozens of old boxes covered in dust and cobwebs, filled with toys, school projects, and old trophies. Attics, where dreams go to die. <coughs> oh, hello, spooky bear. Feels like he's watching me. Everything in here is covered in dust, except this bear. And there's light coming from behind him. What are you hiding, spooky bear? <coughs> Smothered by a giant teddy bear. What an end that would have been. Just as I suspected, a hidden staircase. Jenny was no stranger to the labs at Gumboldt. She'd never seen anything quite like this. Certainly not inside someone's house. Hey! What are you doing up here? Loved by all, kind to a fault, Jenny's cousin was also the most popular girl in town. Oh, uh, hi, Jenny. Er, uh, um, y you... You should be in bed resting. What are you doing up here? I should ask you the same question. What is all this equipment? And why is there a secret elevator running from your room to the attic? Oh, you must need my collection of teddy bears. I see. My apologies, then. But tell me one thing, Susan. Why is that teddy bear wearing a welding helmet? Well, um, there's a simple explanation for that. There are just too many to fit in my bedroom. Susie, clearly something's weighing heavily on your mind. Take a deep breath and answer the question honestly. I promise you'll feel better. It's not what you think. This is where I, um, 
er, teddy bears. I have vintage bears, new bears, rare collectible bears. Enough. Stop avoiding the question. You don't need to hide anything. You can be honest with me. I can't. You wouldn't understand. Try me. Susie's secret was the kind you took to the grave. A shameful, dark secret. A secret so shocking she feared she would lose everything. Her friends would abandon her. Her family would disown her. She'd never find true love. Oh, God! I'm going to die alone! Ugh. You can't tell anyone. You have to promise me. Fine, just stop whimpering like a lost puppy. You're embarrassing yourself. Ugh. Here goes nothing. This is my secret laboratory. Where I design and test my inventions. Your laboratory. Where you invent things. Yes. You. A cheerleading, horse-riding, dress-wearing debutante. Yes. I want to believe you, Susie, but you know how crazy that sounds. That's why you can't tell anyone. If people found out, I'd lose everything. Could it be true? Susie Glatt's, in fact, a secret nerd genius. Was she really leading a double life? There's only one way to find out. Susan Quincy Glatz, I'm gonna have to ask you a few questions. Bows, fluffy bears, stylish clothes. She can't possibly be a scientist. Do you really expect me to believe that you aren't obsessed with boy bands and the color pink? Brain or bimbo, which one is it? I am a scientist. But I also believe in the importance of good skin care and the power of matching accessories. You sound ridiculous. Susie couldn't be pretty, popular, and smart. That was just greedy. The Dean was wearing one the day he died. Could Susie have played a part in the Dean's death? All of Jenny's instincts told her it wasn't possible, but she needed to know for sure. You smell nice. What perfume is that? Oh, thanks. It's called Innocent. I remember you were wearing it last Thursday at the lake. I was. What did you do that day, after you left? Peggy and I took Veronica home. She was really upset. And you were there all afternoon? Yes. Why? How close is Veronica's house to the library? I don't understand. Why do you want to know all this? I need to rule you out as a suspect. Suspect? Why would I be a suspect? You're certainly very good at keeping secrets. I didn't do anything. Just ask Peggy or Veronica. I don't know why you're friends with them. They are terrible character witnesses. First Veronica, then Keith, and now me. I never thought I'd say this, but sometimes you can be a real... jerk. What were you saying about Keith? Well, you didn't exactly make things easier for him, did you? You don't remember, do you? Oh, well, I suppose it wasn't that bad. What do you mean? After you interrupted the Reverend Eulogy, and after Keith asked you to stop, you tripped and knocked over the Dean's casket, and I guess they hadn't secured the lid properly, because he rolled right out, to horrify gasps, as you collapsed and fell into his open grave. 
And that's why everyone's so worried about you. It all came flooding back. She had tried to defend her mom and repair her relationship with Keith. Instead, she had ruined everything. Jenny had lost her best friend. You should talk to Keith. I'm sure he'll forgive you. It's not that simple. He thinks my mom killed his dad. She felt the distance between them grow with every passing minute. How could she face him without answers? I have to find the Dean's real killer. All this stuff looks authentic, but that doesn't mean it belongs to Susie. If this is really your lab, what does that thing do? That's Tim. He's a thermal imaging machine. He uses reflected thermographic projections to infer depth-related topography and subsurface bodies. Come again? He lets you see inside stuff. Hmm. Well, what about that thing? That's Judy Kate, a gamma ray induction polygraph. And that? Hydraulically propelled telemetric manipulator. And this? That's a tea set. What? I like to drink tea! How did you get all this stuff up here anyway? And without being seen? You'd be surprised how much you can hide in a giant stuffed teddy bear. I know what's going on here. You've stolen all this stuff. And you're planning to sell it all to buy more fluffy cushions or pink horses or something. I didn't steal anything. Some of the parts are from my father's factory. The rest I bought with my allowance. That's some allowance. If you didn't steal it, why are you worried about people finding out? I'm head cheerleader. I'm captain of the equestrian team. If the other girls knew about this, they'd laugh me all the way to the back of the cafeteria. Why do you care what they think? It's not just them. If my parents found out about my lab, they'd kill me. Why? Don't they want you to be a scientist? I think they'd like me to marry a scientist. Dad says science is a man's job. Girls are supposed to bake pies and become prom queen. Ugh, everyone in Arthurton is stuck in the past. If anyone else showed him the things I've created, he'd call them a genius and make them his lead scientist. So tell him. Prove him wrong. I... I just can't. You have to keep my secret. I'm begging you, Jenny. Poor Susie. All of her secrets laid bare. Jenny couldn't help but feel... Disgusted. Maybe there was more to Susie than she had first presumed. Seeing textbooks strewn about the floor reminded Jenny of something. My journal! I need to get my stuff back. Where are my clothes? Oh, Gerald took them. Who the hell is Gerald? Our butler. Of course you have a butler. He's taken them to be cleaned and pressed. They'll be ready in a few days. Well, I need them. Now. I've got a dress that would be perfect for you. It's got purple bows and the sequins will really bring out the color of your eyes. No, thank you. I'd rather be burned to death. No one's gonna take me seriously in a purple ball gown. And where's my other stuff? Don't tell me Gerald's got my journal. It's irreplaceable. Like I'd let that nosy old fool see your diary. It's not a diary. It's my case notes. Right, of course. A girl's gotta have a place to keep her secrets. I put all your stuff in the lockbox under my pillows. Are you kidding me? No wonder my head hurts. Jenny was confident that Susie wasn't involved in the Dean's murder. She wasn't evil. Just insufferable. All right, I'm gonna grab my stuff and get out of here. Oh, while you're wandering around, can you find some parts for me? I need a battery and a transistor to finish this device. What? No! I did something for you. It was true. Susie had kept Jenny's journal safe. And the Dean's ring. She'd even revealed her darkest secret to Jenny. Fine! 
enough already. What's a transistor? Oh, it's an electronic voltage regulator that... Just tell me what it looks like. It's a tiny metal object with an antenna and three legs. If you can't find one in my bedroom, there are some old boxes in the attic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Transistor and battery. Got it. Go, Jenny! I've got to get out of here. Bunch of old science fair projects. They had all been submitted by Anonymous, and they'd all won first prize. These awards should be hanging on the walls downstairs. It was sad to see all these marvelous accomplishments hidden away in the attic. Susie wanted so badly to please her parents, to live up to their expectations of what a Glatz girl should be. She never even told them she'd entered the science fairs. object with an antenna and three legs. Looks like a transistor to me. Now, where can I find a battery? Aha! A way out of here! <sighs> Locked. But where is the lock? Stars, lips, hearts, and beakers. What would a girl like Susie use as a password? Beakers. Clever. My stuff! Jenny hid the ring in her pocket and flipped through the pages of her journal. No obvious signs of tampering. At least Susie knows how to mind her own business. Now, where can I find a battery? Sorry, Mr. Pig, but I need your batteries. I love you! I love you! This will only hurt for a second. Thank you, Pig, for donating your body to science. 
I'll give this stuff to Susie, and then I'll find a way out of this place. Oh, wonderful! Thank you! Now, back to the task at hand. Making my escape. Don't you want to know what these parts are for? Only if it will help me get out of here. Ah! Careful! That's a stick of dynamite! Dynamite?! Are you crazy? You could have blown me to bits! I did say be careful! What are you making bombs for? They're not bombs. They're silent explosives. Silent explosives? Think about it. Dynamite that doesn't make a sound. Impossible, you say? Not at all. My first breakthrough came when I discovered the unique properties of... I can use this to blow my way out of here. Um, the explosion might be silent, but I think my mom would notice if part of the house was missing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, thanks for the show and tell, but it's time for me to go. And how exactly are you going to leave without being seen? I'm glad you asked, Susan. I'll be making my exit through the window in the attic. Once I found a way to unlock it. Oh, you're out of luck there. My parents are super security conscious. All the windows are locked electromagnetically. Where are the controls? Downstairs, in Dad's study. And I can't get there without being seen. Is there some kind of override? It's impossible to open them from up here, unless there was a total power failure. Well then, I know exactly what to do. Okay, well, I'll be here if you need help. Complex formulas filled the large chalkboard. Clearly the work of a genius. Okay, she's secretly smart. We get it. What is all this anyway? Oh, that? I'm working on a proof to help me pick the perfect prom dress. You've got to be kidding me. I know, I know. I'm not sure it can be done either, but I've got to try. It's the biggest decision a girl has to make. Gross. Be careful, Claude is very fragile. Fragile? It's enormous. I haven't finished calibrating him yet. If you want to help, get him to pick some things up and put them down again. He needs the practice. Just don't pick up anything too heavy. have been too heavy. Please be gentle with Claude. He's only a prototype and I'm out of replacement parts. again. 
That thing uses a lot of power. It broke again. That thing uses a lot of power. She helps me find things I've dropped on the floor. Why do you have a man's ring? It belonged to... Uh, it belonged to a friend. I'm taking care of it for him. But that doesn't make any sense. I'm telling you the truth. No, I mean, why would a ring made of gold stick to a magnet? Unless... There's something more to it. Which of these machines did you say could see inside things? Excuse me, Tim. We need your help. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is Tim, the thermal imaging machine. Metal, plastic, wood. There's nothing I can't see inside. Except, of course, your innermost thoughts. Look, I don't need a best friend. I just need him to examine the ring. Ouch. That hurt my feelings. Go easy on him. He's quite sensitive. Ugh. Hi, Tim. Nice to meet you. Oh, how wonderful it is to meet you, my new friend. How can I be of service? I need you to look inside something for me. I'd be delighted to. Please place the object on my soft, velvety platform. Come to me, tiny object of vast mystery and import. Reveal to me your deepest secrets. Swim in my warm bath of gamma rays. I'm peering deeply inside you. Ooh, what's that? Deeper still. I've never seen one of those before. Fascinating. All the wonders I have seen. Well, spit it out already. One moment, please, while I paint you a picture of the journey we just shared. I knew there was something special about this ring. It's full of tiny cogs and gears. I've never seen such intricate craftsmanship. I need to borrow your microscope. Tiny buttons hidden in plain sight. Clever. I wonder what they do. opened up like a flower. Why would the Dean have a ring like this? Whatever its true purpose, one thing was clear. This ring was important. Important enough to kill for? 
Dean Strasberry. What were you involved in? Did you say Dean Strasberry? Whose ring is that really? Susie had entrusted her deepest, darkest secret to Jenny. The least Jenny could do was be honest with her. It's the Dean's ring. Well, it was. You stole the Dean's ring? Technically, I found it. Jenny, you've got to turn that into the police. It could be important evidence. Considering the police think my mom is the Dean's murderer, I certainly won't be handing it over to them. But what if they ask me about it? I can't lie to them. I'm a terrible liar. It's not lying. It's just leaving out the parts that don't concern them. I can't go to jail. My parents will disown me and my reputation will be ruined. No one's going to jail as long as we protect each other. I'll keep your secret, you keep mine. Like... friends? Sure. Now go back to whatever mad science experiment you were doing. I've got a window to open. the lock. Besides, I can't just walk out in front of Mrs. Glatz.
it by force alone. If it's locked electromagnetically, it must be connected to the power supply. broke again. That thing uses a lot of power. What does this machine do? That's Judy, Kate. She's a portable lie detector. Portable? It's 18 feet tall and bolted to the floor. Yeah, well, I'm still working on that part. But she can detect a lie with 98% accuracy. That's quite a claim. Let's see. Good evening, small human child. I am Judy Kate, arbiter of truth, detector of lies. Since this is the first time we have met, I will need to calibrate. To begin, please answer this simple question. What is the meaning of life? What? How am I supposed to answer that? Ha! 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 Just kidding. Oh, sorry. I've been experimenting with her personality chip. She's using humor to build a better rapport with subjects. Still needs some work. To begin, please tell me your name. Jenny LeClue. Okay, Jenny LeClue. I am ready to detect. Please speak a truth or a lie. I'm above average height for my age. I think I broke it. It's okay. Her fuse just tripped. She gets very sensitive if you lie to her, especially if it's a big lie. But don't worry, she'll reset in a minute. Interesting. I've got it! In the back of Jenny's brilliant mind, a plan was forming. I know exactly how to get out of here. How can I escape from Glatt's Manor? quite add up. Let me give this some more thought. When I overload the robot arm, it sparks and fuses. And when I lie to Judy Kate, she nearly overloads the power supply. overload them at the same time, then I might be able to short the power and open the window in the attic. But Jenny couldn't operate both machines by herself. Susie? Yes? I need your... Asking Susie for help was worse than having a tooth pulled out. I need you to do something. Of course. What can I do to help? I didn't say I needed your help. Oh, sorry. 
I don't owe you anything. Okay, okay. What do you want me to do? Go stand by Judy, Kate. Uh, all right. But why? No time for questions. Just wait for my instructions. Susie Glass, I am ready to detect. Please speak a truth or a lie. Okay, I'm ready. What should I do now? Just hold on until I give the signal. The robot arm strained under the weight of the giant metal object. Okay, Susie. Tell a lie and make it a big one. Oh, okay. A big lie. Oh, I've got just the thing. I'm wearing black socks. That was a lie. No, Susie, a big lie. Something terrible. I'm just no good at lying. Tell Judy Kate you killed Dean Strousbury. What? That's horrible. I can't say that. Do you want to help or not? Yes, but... Then hurry up and say it. Okay, okay. I killed the Dean? Louder! I killed the Dean. Bigger! I killed Dean Strousbury. Say it like you mean it! I murdered Dean Strasberry! I bashed his brains in! Now I danced on his grave! Wow. That was messed up. Oh my gosh! I'm a horrible person! As Susie Glatz contemplated every bad thing she'd ever done in her life, Jenny heard the unmistakable sound of success. It worked! Now? It's past curfew. Watch me. Well, you can't go out wearing pajamas. I'm not playing dress up with you while my mom is trapped in jail for a crime she didn't commit. The real killer is still out there. And what if you find him? What then? Jenny paused. She hadn't thought that far ahead. Are you scared? Of course not. Jenny would never admit it, even to herself. But she was scared. You know who should be scared? The murderer. Because I'm coming for him. Well, let me help you. We can work out a plan together. Sorry, Susie. But I work alone. At least take this with you, then. So we can stay in touch. Fine, I'll take it. But don't call me. I'll call you. Okay, good luck. And be careful. There's still a killer out there. I'll be fine. Jenny, you won't tell anyone about my lab, right? Only if you cover for me. Of course. I'm always here for you. 
We're going to be best friends, Jenny LeClue. I just know it. Sure. Right after I sign up for cheerleading. To catch a real killer, Jenny needed her detective gear. But that was at home, across town and swarming with police. It wasn't wise to travel through town after curfew. To avoid being caught, she'd have to find another way home. Excellent, thought Jenny. Time to exercise my sneaking muscles. Jenny paused at the edge of the roof, her teeth chattering in the chill wind. Below her, Lake Nowhere glowed eerily in the darkness. From this vantage point, she could see all the way to the lighthouse at the center of the lake. Only the wealthiest families in Arthurton could afford such spectacular views. If I cross the lake, it's just a short stroll through the Forgotten Forest to my house. But navigating the lake at night was not an easy task. Many accomplished sailors had met their doom on the ragged rocks of Bear Claw Bend. Well, I've already worked out a way across. Time to get off this roof before someone spots me. Damn it! Think fast, Jenny! And just like that, Jenny was gone. Her first great adventure cut short before it had begun. Uh, I'm right here. Just hanging around. to Main Street. I can't risk being caught by the sheriff or his goons. The safest way home is across the lake. I am the one you seek. I swim in the shadows of giants that stir beneath an eerie silence. Follow the path, reach the truth, 
What a curious and cryptic message. Was it meant for her? And who had written it? Friend or foe? This could be from the killer. But it was far too dangerous to find out. I have to find out. And so she decided to ignore the message and carry on to her house. There's no way I'm ignoring the case of the mysterious message. SS Susie. A gift from Susie's father as a thank you for preparing his lunch one day. This will get me across the lake in no time. Unfortunately, the boat didn't belong to her. I'll just borrow it for a couple of hours. They won't even notice it's gone. But borrowing something without asking first was just stealing. It's always easier to ask for forgiveness than wait for permission. Of course, the boat needed a key. Jeez. Nobody trusts anyone these days. There must be some other way to start the engine. I bet I can hotwire the boat if I get this panel off. Risk of electric shock. It was far too dangerous. I love danger. Foiled at the last moment by a rusty screw. Oh well, time to turn back. There's only one screw left. I can just pry the panel back. And so she very carefully pulled on the panel. Wow, looks complicated. Far too complicated for a child to even attempt. Mom always says... A great detective focuses on the solution, not the problem. It looks like I can bypass the ignition by turning the dials until all the lights are illuminated. Piece of cake. found a way to cross the lake, but she was still a long way from home. She pulled out her journal and plotted a course. First, I'll navigate my way around Skull Island. Next, I'll sail up the river to the Almasdan Bridge. Then it's just a short stroll through the Forgotten Forest. And finally, home. Got it. Let's go. Jenny had never crossed the lake after dark. Come to think of it, she'd never even driven a boat before. She thrust the throttle forward and felt a cool wind whip through her hair. Sneaking around after curfew had its benefits.
boat. Excellent sandwich shop. Decommissioned over a hundred years ago, but the light mysteriously continued to illuminate the darkness.
swim in the shadows of giants. This must be the place. Closer look. Red herring, a rare and fantastic sight. Can't believe they really exist. Jenny had always believed they were a fisherman's tale, but seeing them firsthand, she's so beautiful. But what was stuck in her scales? A message in a bottle. Curious. I am the voice of reason. I walk amongst the sunken ships that once sailed through the glowing mist. It's another clue. This case just got more dangerous. Jenny had no idea who was behind these messages. This could be an elaborate trap, or it could be the answer I need to prove my mom's innocence. The best course of action was to go back and get help from an adult. No, I have to see where this leads, on my own. Sunken ships, glowing mist. That should be easy to spot. Thanks, fishies. Must be heading in the right direction. <laughs> 